Now, stats is not everyone's favorite subject in biology, and certainly it can be a little bit confusing.、Uh, what's important is that you need to know how we use them and why we use them. So, if in an exam question they that they gave you a set of data or two sets of data, and then ask you which test、uh, do you need to do in order to prove something, and then you need to be able to pick the right one. Or they might very well just tell you, okay, you need to do this test.、Uh, these are the equations,、uh, and then you do the test and then give a conclusion. Here I'll be looking at t-test and Spearman's rank、uh, correlation coefficient, and these two are the commonly asked ones, especially t-test. They both require a deviation,、uh, which is showing the spread of data points within a set of data. However, here I'm not going to talk about that one, but mostly focus on how do we actually conclude or how do we use these stats、uh, to prove a point. Before we start, we need to know、uh, what these tests are for. So we、we'll、look at. Uh, t-test first is a test where we compare the means of two sets of data and to see if there is significant difference. This is a very very important phrase to use in stats and biology. In all of the exams, if there is an exam question on t-test, you have to include the word significant difference in order to score the point.、And、the reason for that is we're saying the word significant means that a factor is causing this effect or this difference. And the Spearman's rank correlation coefficient here is where we find out if there is a positive or negative correlation, or any correlation at all, between two sets of data. I will use this example to sort of illustrate a bit more. So let's say one day you are walking for a hike along the mountains or along the hill, and it was a sunny day. There's a forest on on top of the hill, and there's another forest on the bottom of the hill.、They're、not all going to be of the same height, but the general trend is that you think these these trees are slightly taller. And these trees here. And at that point, as a scientist, you can make a null hypothesis. Is where you say that everything you see is by chance. It's completely random. Nothing is affecting it. So in that sense, it's just so happened that these trees here are slightly taller than those trees. But it's a completely random chance. There's nothing affecting it. It's just pure luck. But as a scientist as well, you form that null hypothesis. You're you're going to need to test it. So what we can then do is to see number one. The question is, are they really different in height? We'll be doing a t test. After you do the t test, you might find out that you have to accept the null hypothesis, saying that actually it's just chance. There's nothing affecting it. Or the more exciting thing is actually we reject the null hypothesis because t test showed that these trees are actually taller than those. Then you can go on to think about why that is the case. So, is it because they're higher up, maybe because of the soil difference, or is it because of the sun? So, if you suspect that there might be a relationship、uh, or correlation between the light intensity and the height of the trees, you can then do a Spearman's rank correlation coefficient test to find out if that is true. And if you find out that actually there is no correlation there, but you know because of t size that something is affecting it, then perhaps you can do another、uh, Spearman's rank coefficient test between the height and perhaps soil nutrients con-、uh, concentrations or、um, availability of water or oxygen, etc. So that's how we use the two test. Next bit, we're going to have a look at how do we actually make a conclusion out of these two tests. The test itself is actually rather easy if you are being careful, because they will give you the equations to these two、uh, for these two tests, and then they will give you a table perhaps, and you just need to follow the table carefully, put the numbers into the equation carefully, check your answers carefully to make sure you have the right calculation. But Uh, and usually people find that alright. More difficult bit is the fact that you need to do conclusion from your results, and people often forget how do I interpret the number. So here we're gonna have a look at it. I'm gonna use a sort of a timeline way to explain how this works. What you will find is after doing the test, you need to do the、uh, find the degrees of freedom of your data sets, and then use a probability table, compare your t value or r s value with a critical value. Find the critical value at P equals 0.05, and I'll explain how that what that means. And at your particular degree of freedom, P means probability. So that what that is saying is that that probability we've got a five percent chance that what you see was due to chance. So a five percent probability that your results are completely random. And at that point in the table, you will find a critical value. And what you then do is to look at your value. Your t value or your r s value, and then decide which side of the line is gonna come. So if you imagine that this is a timeline, meaning、uh, if you go into this side, the number is gonna be bigger, and on this side, the number is gonna be smaller. Let's say if your value lies on this side,、uh, then we say the first point is saying t value or my r s value is bigger than 
the critical value. In that case, what we're saying is because we're saying at this point at p equals 0 0.05, we say that we are five, there are 5% probability that our results is due to chance or in 95% confident that there is a significant difference, that something is actually causing it. So if our value is bigger than the critical value, we say that we are more than 95% confident there is a significant difference. And I'm going to underline that to make sure that you do include this word in that, or that uh, a correlation exists. And in that case, what we will do is that we will reject the null hypothesis what we're basically saying that this is exciting something we know that something is causing an effect and then we can do further study on that one on the other hand if your value is smaller than the critical value so it's lying on this side and the way i would structure it is that my t value or rs value is smaller than my critical value and therefore we are less than 95 percent confident there is a significant difference or correlation exists what they're saying is, oh, actually, I'm not entirely sure. Okay, I'm not that confident. So what we then do is that we accept our hypothesis. So that means that actually uh, what we see is by chance, it's completely random. It just so happens it was the case. The difference that we saw was actually pure luck. That is perhaps what we say the more difficult bit, really. To conclude so, uh, very quickly, so we get uh, from our degrees of freedom and the probability table, we will find a critical value at p equals 0 0.05. What this number here, p equals 0 0.05, means is that we have a 5% probability that our results are due to chance. Or, to rephrase it, we have a 95% uh, probability that our results are significantly different or that a correlation exists. Then we compare the value. So let's say if our critical value is 1.50, at p equals 0 0.05 and in this case my t value is 3.1 and then I can then say my t value or rs value is bigger than my critical value therefore I am more than 95% confident that there is a significant difference or that correlation exists and therefore I reject the null hypothesis so here I'm saying yes I am really quite sure I'm 95% sure that something is going on here that is worth investigating into but on the other hand, let's say if my value is 0 0.9, so 0 0.9 is smaller than 1.50. We say that we are less than 95% confident that there is a significant difference or that correlation exists. And we accept the null hypothesis, meaning we're saying, well, actually, I'm only, I'm less than 95% sure. I'm not really quite sure in that sense if there's anything happening. So we say, actually, it might be just due to chance, due to pure luck that we saw uh, what we saw. And that's probably the more complicated bit uh, that you need to know about stats. But once you remember this timeline-ish thing here, you should be able to explain it. And this is how you want to lay it out. This is one mark in exams, and that's another mark. And sometimes that the third that is the third mark, or perhaps they would want you to actually restate the null hypothesis and saying what you're going to do, or state the actual including statement. So, for example, sunlight light intensity is affecting tree height or that two groups of data are significantly different and there you have it this is stats in as biology